Really good team. Uh, it's going into the year, they were somebody I kind of had my eye on. It's, it's basically the same team as last year. They're all a year older, um, both in the rotation and on the position player side of it. it it's just one of those teams that feels like they're, it's their time. And um, Brad's done a good job recruiting. They've played those guys, they've developed those guys, and now they're old and experienced, playing with a lot of confidence. Um, you know, if you can win five out of six in our league over two weekends, I feel like you can play in Omaha. So I think it's an Omaha caliber team and should be a lot of fun. Do you feel, you said time, do you feel like time is winding down? Do you feel that as a player, better coach? Or is it as far as like the season? Yeah. You know, um, in this league, they're, they're all the same. You know what I mean? There's no, oh, we get to play those guys that weekend. Um, so I don't really look at it, you know, that way. And, and I think, um, just staying very level-headed and very stable as far as the only thing that matters is the one in front of us. Very old school, very coach speakish, but I think you have to approach it that way. Um, this is just like all the rest of them, an opponent with old players that are playing well that we have respect for. That should be a great series. I mean, I, I don't know who else is playing who, but when you look at the, the talent and the experience on both sides, I would think this is like the marquee series of the weekend. 35% of your runs this year have come with two outs. Yeah. 33 or 40 games. That's why we've won yeah, I mean, 80% of the games. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> I don't mean that, I know, uh, but, you know. But, like, but can you just yeah. talk about, I mean, is there a certain goal you have every year, like percentage-wise, and, and can you explain uh, the discipline it takes? Yeah, I think, um, you know, to me it starts with not trying to do too much. You know what I mean? It, every two-out hitting will decide who wins and loses a lot, you know. Um, and putting yourself in position um, a lot is you're going to leave more guys on base. But if you get more guys on base, you have more chance to score those, those two out runs. So I think we've done a great job early in innings of setting the table, of putting guys in scoring position. And we have been one of the, the better teams I've had at, at driving guys in. And uh, I think what it is is there's just no break in the order for anybody to really pitch around anybody without the next guy taking a quality at bat and, and hurting you. It's like the other night, it's like it's almost a surprise that Cade Belosa didn't hit a line drive somewhere. You know what I mean? Um, because of how good we've been in situational hitting, runner in third and less than two outs, I believe we're over 75%. That's remarkable at getting guys in from third with less than two outs. Um, so, you know, it's just a veteran group of hitters that have a really clear understanding of what they're doing. And I think it really shows, you know, in those those two out RBI situations. Do uh, you guys expect to have Tommy and Trey back in the lineup this weekend? They couldn't play on Tuesday, um, but I'm hopeful. We did not practice yesterday. Um, yeah, they've gotten a ton of treatment. Um, if you see Josh Walker, you know, somebody give him a pat on the back or a hug. He's he's working overtime, you know, with a lot of guys. And um, those guys are intense competitors, and, and their life is built around baseball and stepping in the batter's box in those situations. So if they can play, they're going to play. This pitching staff is the strength of their team. They don't hit really well. Um, coming out of the bullpen, freshman lefty, Davis, what do you see from them? Yeah, they, um, they have a really good staff. And much like us, they've survived some injuries. Like they have two, you know, in my opinion, few major, future major league pitchers that are out. And you wouldn't know it, like looking at their, their pitching numbers. Um, I think um, he's very talented. Um, you know, you have to be on top of your approach and what you're trying to do against good pitching. And this team, our team, has done a good job of that. This is another weekend where you can't, you can't give them anything because if you come off your plan or you swing at a ball, then they can really start to expose you. And he's, he's a guy that can do that. not making any um, at-bat or situation too big. Mm -hmm. A lot of the players have said that. What goes into that mindset and building that mindset? Yeah, I think, um, you know, staying committed to your, your plan and your, your process. Um, you know, the game doesn't change ever as far as what's required to be successful. That's the unique thing about baseball. The problem is a lot of times people or the player will change and they'll get away from the things that make them successful uh, what causes that you know failure 
pressure, all of those types of things, these guys are really good at just staying focused on their plan. And I think that's why you see consistency in, in performance. You know, you, you don't ever get to perfection in baseball. Um, this is why I probably wish I was a football coach or, or basketball coach at times. Um, but these guys are very mature in A, how they prepare, but then A or B, how they stay in, in the moment and just focus on the task at hand. And again, it's, it's super boring, uh, but I believe in it to my core that that's how you get consistent performance. And we have veteran players that have, you know, had success, learned from it, built on it, had failure, overcome it, been very consistent mentally. And um, that's why we'll always have a chance as we have talent and, and we have guys that are in the right frame of mind. Do you talk to them about resetting after a bad pitch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They have uh, – that's uh, – one of the things that I will come down on them for is if a bad play – or a bat at bat early in a game, if I feel like that carries over to defense or if I feel like it carries over to the next at bat or next pitch. It's that old saying, you don't want a, a pitch or a play to beat you twice, or you don't want to have a, a, a hangover from a bad game and, and bring that to the next game. Um, it's about present moment focus, and um, these guys have done a really good job of that. And uh, it's almost like when they don't do it, it's almost abnormal. And I can't tell you how hard it is to ingrain that in the age player that we're dealing with, no matter how talented they are. But part of our team's success is you have your better players, Dylan, Paul, Gavin, um, Trey, Tommy, those guys are the best mentally too. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's going to be a good attribute for us as we move forward. To that end, did you go over the Nichols game? You know, we didn't practice yesterday. Um, I have a different thought on the psychology of our team um, than probably anybody else of, of what we need to do to be successful. Um, there's always teaching. There's always learning. We have a beautiful uh, team meeting room with great video that will go over plays, you know, both good and bad from times that help build our process of winning. Um, but it's, it's important for them to, we're just talking a lot about present moment thinking and they have to master the ability to move on. And, and we've talked about that in our successes, okay? I'll just, as an example, like winning two out of three against Arkansas, big deal for this program. It was a big deal for us, you know? Um, we had to move on the next week to Tennessee. Then all the world of college baseball wanted, it was really honed in on that Tennessee series. Well, that's great, we won the series. You gotta go on the road to South Carolina, who's 50 and three or whatever their record is. And then, okay, you finish that one, you got to move forward. So it, it would be inconsistent of me to go backwards when we're asking them to move forwards. Doesn't mean that those learning opportunities are there, but mentally we need them focused on this weekend. I want to talk about Ty Floyd. What is the difference between him, I would say, like end of last year to yeah. the beginning of this year? And how did he earn that starting rotation spot once again? Well, um, last year to this year, you could always see the talent. I mean, you know, when I was considering coming here, you know, and, and evaluating the roster, the little time that I had to do, um, you obviously looked at that freshman class. And looking at Ty, it was a guy that did okay as a freshman, but you could definitely see the, the raw talent. Um, I thought him and Jason Kelly did a really good job of, establishing what he was last year but then he needed more game experience behind it had some adversity you know in in the season last year and then looking at the staff it was like okay if we're going to do anything this guy with this ability we got to get him out there and so there was like he had seven appearances after this his last seven appearances i thought were were really good um he pitched really good against um Alabama, he pitched really good against Ole Miss. Both of those were out of the pen, like extended bullpen outings. Pitched great at Vanderbilt, pitched really good in the SEC tournament. Uh, started a game we won in a regional. Um, and then, so for me, it was like, this was gonna be a guy that was gonna pitch in the rotation. Well, then with some of the injuries, that wasn't the right thing for our team to do those first couple weekends, and Ty's a great guy. So it's like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the bullpen. And against Western Michigan, the, we had a close game, we brought him in and he brought us home. Uh, beat Kansas State uh, with Paul and Ty, you know, setting up a Friday and 
Pete Hughes said, that's a, you're not going to lose very much on Friday if you put both those guys in the same game. And then by that time, it was like, we need to get him into the, the rotation. And I say this all the time. I mean, he's had outings that have been better than other, but the guy's undefeated. Like, he is, he's an undefeated pitcher in the SEC. It's going to be, what is it, April 27th. Like, that just tells you how good he is. And he just keeps getting better. And um, his prep's amazing. Like, if you just followed Paul and Ty around for a week from end of outing to next outing, you go, that's what it's supposed to look like. And I hope our younger pitchers are paying attention to that uh, because they do it as, as good as anybody. When you talk about raw talent, did you just felt, did you feel like his fastball was just unique or, you know, he was just wasn't maybe throwing strikes or didn't have a lot of confidence? Like, how do you pinpoint somebody who has, like, potential? Well, um, there's um, talent and then there's usable skill. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that the talent never been a question. Usable skill, it's like, it sometimes it takes experience to get through that, um, and there's there's growing pains to, to this thing. And I really believe this: the jump from let's just call it high school baseball to the SEC will be far greater than any of our players make from LSU to professional baseball at any level of professional baseball. I think if you put Ty out on the mound in a major league game, he get he could get outs. I have no question about that in my mind. And and part of that has just been the experience of getting through failure understanding what makes him successful, being committed to that mental game, health, that routine I was just speaking of. I think he's kind of at this, this really good uh, tipping point of peak performance. And um, now you're seeing that talent come out. I mean, that was an excellent, he couldn't, you can't execute a college game better than he did last Saturday, which was huge for our team. Was, was really that whole Alabama series just kind of the blueprint of kind of the ideal way to get through a weekend with this Pitching staff. I mean, all those guys. Oh, against Ole Miss last yeah. weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, um, sorry. no, it's okay. Um, it certainly helped. Um, you know, you're looking at, um, you know, Paul. He just he strikes out guys, so the pitch count gets up. Um, Griffin Herring is a person or a pitcher we've talked about a lot. You know, him and Gavin Gidry, they both just have a solid mental game. You know, like I don't know what the metrics are in their pitches. If they're like elite, I think they're pretty good. Um, but it's just, it's just more than that. Like they, they've, they've come into this thing super seasoned, you know, um, in terms of tough competition, they really believe in themselves. So you could go to Griffin and he does a great job on, on Friday, you know, Ty extending into the game the way that he did, you know, obviously then we only use Nate, you know, at a perfect time to use Nate uh, coming off of, you know, his hamstring injury. Um, so now you're sitting there with a readily available pen on Friday you know, Javen coming back into the mix is a big deal for our team. Um, you know, that that helped. And, and those guys, you know, weren't perfect, um, you know, with Javen, um, Bryce and Riley, but they did just enough. And, and we talked about this the weekend before with Kentucky. It's like sometimes if you can just keep it at one, we're in striking distance. And uh, that's what they did. So they did their they did their job. And um, so, yeah, I would say yes, Glenn, that's a good observation. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, I thought he looked great. He's going to be a superstar player, you know, in, in the program. And, um, you know, I th I mean, one of those, again, tip your hat to the opponent. Their defense was spectacular in the second inning. I mean, he absolutely smashed a 2-0 pitch to left field, and the guy made the first diving catch that if it tips off his glove, it's two runs, and he's – in scoring position with Dugas coming up to turn a lineup over. It could completely change the game. Um, two strike at bat to tie. That was to tie the game. We were down three to two. Guy made a couple nice pitches to it, and then he got behind it, moved the ball uh, to get the tying run in, and then he let off the, well, he didn't lead off the ninth, but we're down by one, and another two strike hit to, to get us going and lead off. So the best is yet to come for him. Um, I, I couldn't be more excited about him. I think so. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, obviously, if, if Tommy and Trey can play, they're going to play. If, if not, he's probably going to play. And um, that's OK. That's, that, uh, that's OK that, to have him in there. And I'm just, the athletic talent's easy to see. The, the work ethic is easy to see. Um, but he's, he's in control of himself. And I, I expect him to be a really good player. He'll be one of those guys that isn't going to be one of the guys leaving, let's just say Dylan or Gavin, you know, 
he's going to replace one of those guys. You know what I mean? He's going to be a staple and player in, in our program. And I think the other night and the opportunities he've had, he's had, he's shown that he's capable of doing that. And that's a really good, really good feeling from my chair to know we have a player, you know, and that's that good. And, and again, it's another thought on the depth. Like you can't survive a lot of this injury stuff that we have ever but we have great depth so I mean we didn't win the game the other night but it certainly wasn't because of his at bats or defense or anything like that so really happy he's here.